Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Mark Rowell, and he is N7MHR. Now, here's his question. Before we get into the question, let me just take a moment to give a special thanks to uh, James II. Uh, James is a patron of mine, which means he helps support this channel financially. You too can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash ke0og and picking something that works for you. Now let's get down to the question. I have an Alpha Delta DXCC 8040-2015-10 meter band antenna. Okay, now Alpha Delta makes many things. Uh, one of which is um, um, our multiband uh, wire antennas. They're fan dipoles, although on some of the lower bands they have um, some trapped uh, dipoles so that they can be a little bit shorter uh, than the usual ones. Um, I looked at the DXEE, which was 40 through 10, and the 40 and 20 were the same wire with some traps on it. The problem that I ran into on it was it would not cover the entire 40 meter band. You had to choose which part, upper, lower, middle, whatever, uh, to make it work. And the problem there is FT8 is way down at the bottom of the band and your single side band is up toward the top. So you kind of have a choice of what you're going to do, digital modes or um, analog speech modes. Okay, so um, this DXCC 8040-2015-10 is similar. Now he says it worked okay for years in the California high desert, but when I moved to Rosebud, Oregon, the thing went out of tune. I'm starting by taking apart all the connections. First of all, before we get into cleaning the antenna and retuning it, uh, a big difference could be the humidity. Another difference could be the height. Now, the way the antennas come, you can tune them, okay? But you're going to have to start with the, um, the top, which is probably going to be the trapped part, okay? And you're gonna tune the inner band first, which is probably 40, although it may not be, it could be 20. Um, and you're gonna tune that and get those lengths just right. Uh, you can actually just take a, they're, they're insulated, so you could just put a tight little circle in each end. Do the same thing on each end, okay? And then tune out from that on the multiband antenna, and then tune the lower bands in whatever order works for you. But remember that in a fan dipole, tuning one band on a different fan uh, will very probably at least slightly change the tuning on the others. So you're gonna to have to devote an entire afternoon to this. You want somebody in the station um, with a you know two meter handheld or something telling you what they see so you can make these adjustments in near real time. I found that I did have to make adjustments on mine for uh, 20 and 40 uh, when I tested it. Now, I opted not to make this the station reference antenna or the reference station antenna uh, because it didn't cover all of 40. I picked another antenna that was an off-center fed dipole that did cover all of 40 and 20. And now that we're getting into uh, the DX season with the sunspot number going up, you're going to want to be able to cover the higher bands, 10, 15, and 20 as well as 12 and 17 if you can okay to get those higher bands and sometimes it might be better to put in a vertical antenna so that you can get a nice takeoff angle on those higher bands and work some really cool dx i'm hearing all kinds of things from my colleagues at the ham radio club who are telling me about the stations they worked on, 10 and 12 and so on. It's getting to be pretty fantastic these days. So before you 
before you take it apart, make sure you've got it in the spot that you want it to be because changing the height will change the tuning. Uh, get it to the right place. Um, I would suggest if it's you're in Oregon, it might be between a couple trees, that you put some eye hooks in there with some uh, little pulleys and make sure the pulleys aren't too large for the rope and so that you can let the antenna all the way down, make the changes, pull it up, do the testing and so on. Note that the testing really needs to be done from the shack end of the transmission line because what you're tuning is both the transmission line and the antenna. Okay, um, he says, um, I'm starting to take apart all the connectors, cleaning them and putting them back together. There really is only one connector on the antenna and that is right at the bottom. Note there's no ballon in this antenna. You've got the shield connected to one side. You've got the uh, inside element connected to the other side. You could put some ferrite beads on there. That would be my first recommendation. A second recommendation is to coil about nine or ten turns about oh anywhere from nine inches to a foot in diameter. Now that takes a fair amount of coax um, but you can do that to help keep your coax from uh, radiating. Um, also of course make sure you have your ground rod in place and bring that antenna to a lightning arrestor on the ground rod. That will change the tuning for the better, okay? And make things a lot easier. Okay, now, um, as far as the antenna, as, as the wires are concerned, um, if there are soldering, soldered joints, uh, I would suspect you don't have a problem unless you can see visible cracking in which case you'd want to resolder those, okay? Um, in what order do you tune the antenna? Well, I would do the top one first because that's your trap antenna. Tune in to out and get that right because if you trim the out and then you trim the in, you're changing the length of the whole antenna. You'll throw your out tuning off. And then you can do your um, the fan vertical part of it, or fan uh, dipole part of it. Um, so I assume there's some interaction between the wires. There is, there is a little bit of interaction. That's a problem with fan dipoles. But uh, this antenna should come into tune for you. It's strong as can be. It should withstand high winds. Um, and you can go ahead and put a little uh, tightening force on it to pull it all the way up because the dipole, uh, the uh, feed line is pulling it down in the middle. It should be a good antenna and it should work for you. So there you have it. If you have watched this video this far, uh, you are a supporter of this channel, I appreciate it. Please subscribe and click like. And if you would like to support this channel financially, go to decastlercom slash support and pick a way that works for you. And until we next meet, 73.